George Mantor had an iris garden which he improved each year by throwing out the commoner varieties. One day his attention was called to another very fine iris garden. Jealously, he made some inquiries. The garden, it turned out, belonged to the man who collected his garbage. A very dirty composer. was attempting to explain to a friend how dirty a person was whom he had recently met. He said, he has dirt between his fingers the way you and I have between our toes. Schoenberg always complained that his American pupils didn't do enough work. There was one girl in the class in particular who, it is true, did almost no work at all. He asked her, one day, why she didn't accomplish more. She said, I don't have any time. He said, how many hours are there in the day? She said, 24. He said, nonsense. There are as many hours in a day as you put into it. When I told David Tudor that this talk on music was nothing but a series of stories, he said, don't fail to put in some benedictions. I said, what in heaven's name do you mean by benedictions? Blessings, he said. What blessings, I said. God bless you, everyone. Yes, he said, like they say in the sutras, this is not idle talk, but the highest of truths. On another occasion, Schoenberg asked a girl in his class to go to the piano and play the first movement of a Beethoven sonata, which was afterwards to be analyzed. She said, it is too difficult. I can't play it. Schoenberg said, you're a pianist, aren't you? She said, yes. He said, then go to the piano. She did. She had no sooner begun playing than he stopped her to say that she was not playing at the proper tempo. She said that if she played at the proper tempo, she would make mistakes. He said, play at the proper tempo and do not make mistakes. She began again. And he stopped her immediately to say that she was making mistakes. She then burst into tears and between sobs, explained that she had gone to the dentist earlier that day and that she had a tooth pulled out. He said, do you have to have a tooth pulled out in order to make mistakes? His business of working with sounds that we have no ears to hear the music, the spores, 
shot off from Basidia, make obliges us to busy ourselves microphonically. During a counterpoint class at UCLA, Schoenberg sent everybody to the blackboard. We were to solve a particular problem he had given and to turn around when finished so that he could check on the correctness of the solution. I did as directed. He said, that's good. Now find another solution. I did. He said, another. Again, I found one. Again, he said, another. And so on. Finally, I said, there are no more solutions. He said, what is the principle underlying all of the solutions? One day, I asked Schoenberg what he thought about the international situation. He said, the important thing to do is to develop foreign trade. One day, when I was visiting across the hall, Sonia Sekula, I noticed she was painting left-handed. I said, Sonia, aren't you right-handed? She said, yes, but I might lose the use of my right hand. And so, I'm practicing using my left. I laughed and said, what if you lose the use of both hands? She was busy painting and didn't bother to reply. Next day, when I visited her, she was sitting on the floor, painting with difficulty, for she was holding the brush between two toes of her left foot. I enrolled in a class in mushroom identification. The teacher was a PhD and the editor of a publication on mycology. One day he picked up a mushroom, gave a good deal of information about it, mainly historical, and finally named the plant as Pluteus cervinus edible. I was certain that the plant was not Pluteus cervinus. Due to the attachment of its gills to the stem, it seemed to me to be an entoloma, and therefore possibly seriously poisonous. I thought, what shall I do? Point out the teacher's error? Or following school etiquette, say nothing? Let other members of the class possibly poison themselves? I decided to speak. I said, I doubt whether that mushroom is Pluteus cervinus. I think it's an entoloma. The teacher said, well, we'll key it out. That was done, and it turned out I was right. The plant was Entoloma grayanum, a poisonous mushroom. The teacher came over to me and said, if you know so much about mushrooms, why did you take this class? I said, I take this class because there's so much about mushrooms I don't know. Then I said, by the way, how is it that you didn't recognize that plant? He said, well, I specialize in a gel jelly fungi. I just give the fleshy fungi a whirl. Thank you.